It's time to tune in to Defending the Faith with Frank Harbor. Hear the latest about religious liberty. A win for religious freedom in one of the remaining blockbuster cases facing the U.S. Supreme Court this term. A legal battle continues for the Little Sisters of the Poor for nearly a decade now. A street preacher armed with a speaker, a microphone, and a camera strapped to his chest is now banned from the village. Our founding fathers believed in the separation of church and state, but not for one fleeting moment. Did they believe in the separation of God and government? And powerful apologetics. Are you prepared to defend the faith? I'm convinced unless we trust in God, this nation is finished. We're facing a new kind of enemy. We're involved in a new kind of warfare. And we need the help of the Spirit of God. Three, two, one. Welcome to another episode of Defending the Faith. I am Frank Harbour. I am your host. I am the chief legal counsel of Defending the Faith Alliance. We defend the faith. We defend the faith through apologetics, evangelism. We teach people how to share their faith and how to talk about Jesus Christ. But we also share Christ in the legal arena. And we have many ongoing cases uh, where we're defending people's religious freedom, the right to be heard, the right to even share the gospel. Mm -hmm. I've got uh, a case that I'm going to in Kentucky oh, wow. uh, here in three weeks that, uh, you know, we're going to be, you know, uh, fighting for the right for people to share the gospel in the public square. Uh, we've got a lot of different cases uh, going on like that. But today we're going to be talking about evangelism and how to get the message out there. You know, the, the Bible talks about the gospel, which is the good news and the good news is needs to be shared. It needs to be shared to the ends of the earth. Jesus gave a command. He gave a commission that we're to take the gospel to the end of the earth. Now, God has given, you know, many great people uh, to help us. The Bible says that he, he gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors, some to be teachers. Mm -hmm. And so we have definitely... Uh, on the show today, a teacher. He's a professor, uh, and I think he probably would be an evangelist too. Yes, you sir. know, so he would definitely meet the qualifications for the office of the evangelist. But he holds the chair of fire at Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminar uh, Seminary, the L. R. Scarborough Chair of Fire, which goes way, way back. Now that is the seminary that I graduated from. I got a master's of divinity there and I got a PhD in evangelism. And so we actually have the guy here who teaches, uh, he's over the evangelism department, teaches in the chair of fire. And I actually have the chair of fire in your office up there. <laughs> yep. But uh, Dr. Matt Queen, welcome to the show. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, Dr. Harbour, thank you so much. And one thing that Dr. Harbour did not say is that he also was a professor of evangelism at Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. So I'm so indebted to you. I remember when I was back in North Carolina as a PhD student myself, a master's student, reading the things that you did, learning about your ministry. So thank you so much for you paving the way for someone like me to be able to do what I do today. So Absolutely. I was there for a, a few years and then, you know, went and that was some of the greatest years that I ever had. You know, I got to teach with Dr. Roy Fish and Dr. Malcolm McDowell. Wow. I and mean, <laughs> legends. I and mean, and the current president of Southwestern Seminary was your graduate assistant. Is that Dr. correct? Dr. Adam Greenway. And so, yes, he worked for me for several years and just outstanding. Yes. Outstanding student. Knows how to share the gospel. You know, he's he one of us. He's just, he's absolutely uh, uh, fabulous. Absolutely. Now, where did you go to seminary at? Well, I went to Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary in Wake, For uh, Wake Forest, North Carolina. The reason why is uh, I'm from North Carolina. I'm from Asheville, up where Billy Graham uh, uh, was and everything. And so uh, I went to uh, Mars Hill College, which is a Baptist school that is there uh, in the mountains. And then I went to Southeastern uh, Seminary. Now, my pastor told me, uh, Dr. Harbour, you can go to two seminaries. It would be either Southwestern or Southeastern. Yeah. And because I'd never been away from home, I opted for Southeastern. It was going to, that four hours was long enough for me. So that's why I went there. And I did my Master of Divinity there. And I also did my PhD there and uh, did I taught for them in their college. And then I taught for Liberty University Online. And then in 2010, came to Southwestern Seminary. So, Well, we are so blessed to have Dr. Queen in Texas. And he's 
done a book with Dr. O.S. Hawkins on the invitation. He has two books coming out in the near, near future. I think yes. they're coming out this year. Uh, it, it, beginning of next year and in the middle of next year. Yeah, tell uh-huh. us what the titles of these books are yeah, so, tentatively here. Yeah, so, uh, and you can go on Amazon right now and look up Recapturing Evangelism. That's going to be my evangelism textbook uh, with Broadman Holman Academic. And it's going to be kind of a, a, a 10 chapters, a thoroughgoing understanding of a fully orbed understanding of personal and church evangelism. And hopefully be taught in several of our seminaries, I hope. And then uh, the other book is with O.S. Hawkins, as you know, former pastor of uh, First Baptist Dallas. Uh, he is the emeritus CEO of Guidepo- uh, Guidestone, excuse me, uh, which is the financial resources for insurance and for um, retirement for the Southern Baptist Convention. And uh, he, he knows how to give invitations. I give them, and we put uh, that together, and we put a, a, a book together with uh, uh, Thomas Nelson called The Gospel Invitation. That's awesome. So if anybody here is a, a pastor of a church, you definitely want to get a copy of that book. Well, I'm so excited that Dr. Queen here, I mean, you know, I'm going to tell you up front, this is one of my favorite people in the whole world. And, uh, you know, I learned from the greatest of the greats at sure. Southwestern. And now we have Dr. Queen training up a new generation mm-hmm. of seminary students. And, you know, it's incredible. Um, Dr. Queen also was a grader for Dr. Danny Forshe. Yes. And uh, Dr. Forshe and I go way, 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 way <laughs> back. And you were his grader. And he started telling me about you back then. And the, that's when the legend of Matt Queen, you know, I knew it. I knew it was coming. Um, but. You know, now you, you you're you're actually one of the most effective mm. soul winners that I've ever met. Mm. I put you, you know, in my echelon of, mm. of people up there that I know that share the gospel. So, you know, having you in here today is a treat. Anybody listening, I'm gonna tell you this is this is Luke Skywalker. <laughs> this this guy is the guy to 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 know about how in, how to share the gospel. So, Dr. Queen, what does it take? to share the gospel. There's going to be people listening today. Some people have never shared their faith. Some have tried and maybe didn't do so mm-hmm. good. And they haven't been doing it in a while. And others, you know, they've been doing it for a while, but they'd like to hear some pro tips. Yeah. So I think one thing that we all need to understand is a principle that we learn in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 3 and 4. The Apostle Paul, when he's writing the Corinthians, he says, uh, for I deliver to you as of first importance that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried, and he was raised on the third day. Now, we focus a lot on that verse 4, he died, was buried, and raised according to the scriptures, and we should, that's the gospel. But at the beginning, he says, for I delivered to you as of first importance, that which I also received. You know what that means? Well, what what it takes to start to be a witness, if you or I know enough of the gospel to be saved by it. Hmm then we know enough of the gospel to share it. That's so good. He says, I told them what someone else told me. And so here's the good news. If you right now, you just on a piece of paper, there on your phone, just in your mind, if you had, if you can just imagine someone coming up and saying, can you tell me how to be saved? If you would know the answer to that, then it's a good, great likelihood that you probably are saved. It doesn't mean you for sure are saved, but it's likely that you would be. And here's the good news. You can tell somebody else that. But if you're here and you're listening to us and you say, you know what, if I actually got approached and asked, what's the way of salvation? And I couldn't answer that. You at least need to ask ask yourself, do I know enough of the gospel to be saved by it in the first place? Because those who've been saved by it know enough to tell somebody else. So I think that's the first thing you have to be saved. And then the second thing is to think about this. A lot of people say, well, and uh, Dr. Harbour, you know, as an evangelist professor, you probably taught. Did you teach EE or CWT? What What did you teach your students? Um, uh, uh, both. And then both. Okay. when I started uh, grading, mm-hmm. I was uh, the certifier for CWT under Dr. McDowell. So I had to know every word. It was a point off for every word. I, I had to memorize <laughs> every word. Every, every, every word. Yeah. So and, I, and we had CWT. Dr. Forshee, mm-hmm. he, he, he had us go through CWT. And listen, I'm a great beneficiary. You're a great beneficiary. There are thousands of people who are great beneficiaries of these witness training models that had you memorize things. Right. Absolutely. But here's the good news about it. If you know enough of the gospel to be saved, you can share it and you don't have to memorize anything. You can you can evangelize without having to memorize anything because you know the gospel. And some people will say, well, you know, I just don't know enough about the gospel uh, to be able to be, be shared, uh, to share the gospel. I, I don't have a lot of memorization 
But here's the good news. Not one time do we see in the New Testament where anybody used EE <laughs> or CWT or faith or some memorized presentation. That doesn't mean we should not use those. But it means we can also share without having to use one of those at all. And so it's not about uh, how much you know about this and that and the other, but it's about who you know. And if you know Jesus and are spending time with him, Acts 4.13 said, uh, they, they marveled because John and Peter had been with Jesus. Mm. And if you spend time with Jesus, just like John and Peter, you can't help but spend time telling others about Jesus. You know, somebody else, uh, Dr. Harbour will say, well, you know, people aren't interested in the gospel today. Well, I can tell you, I've done it. I did it last night. I took my church out. We had 41 go out to do door-to-door evangelizing, shared the gospel with two young uh, 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 generation uh, uh, Zs uh, last night, and we're able to go through the whole gospel, call for response and everything. People today are a lot more willing to hear the gospel than Christians are to tell the gospel. Yes, absolutely. But even if they're not, let's say that they're not. Let's just give you your objection that people don't want to hear about enough about the gospel. Dr. Harper, have you ever had somebody come to you and say, hey, I want to show you my grandchild? Mm-hmm. You know, and they show you on the phone yeah. and you think that you just got one picture and you got to go, you get to picture 42 and you're just like, oh, somebody, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you think that grandparent cares whether or not you're interested? No. They just want to <laughs> show you what they are. And if we got that excited about the gospel, here's the fact of the matter. Whether pe- lost people, uh, they will hear, but lost people, they don't know about the gospel. They don't. If 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 they could get to the gospel on their own, they would. So the only way that they will get saved is if they're exposed to it and if mm. the Holy Spirit touches their heart, convicts them. So here's the fact of the matter. Even if they're not initially interested, that doesn't stop grandparents from showing people uh, pictures of their grandkids. And they do it. And we watch it. And here's the fact of the matter. If you're interested in the gospel and you tell people about it, then they'll be willing to hear it. And you just mentioned exposure. Yes. So, you know, you think about... Romans 1 16, Paul yes. says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God mm-hmm. unto salvation to everyone who believes. That's right. So I think that, you know, the gospel is not dependent on how eloquent the sharer is, mm-hmm. but how powerful the actual message is and the power behind the gospel. That's right. And I would say this success in evangelism is not when somebody gets saved. Mm-hmm. Now, I know that kind of is a shock. But that's God's success, not ours. Mm -hmm. If you and I share the gospel with someone and they get saved, God's responsible. If you and I share the gospel with someone and they reject it, they're responsible. But if we don't share the gospel, we're responsible. And so the fact of the matter is, at our church, every week, yesterday, we celebrated 27 full presentations of the gospel. Of those, we don't know of anybody who got saved from those 27. But our church still celebrated them because success in evangelism is doing it. The Mm. only failure in evangelism is a failure to evangelize. So you're exactly right. The power of the gospel and stewarding it, that's where we ought to find our success. If people get saved, we give all the glory to God. See, I think sometimes that we don't share because we think, I'm not going to make a difference and this and that. But I think we underestimate. And, and, and to our own detriment and, and to, you know, uh, an analysis of even our faith at the moment. But perhaps the gospel is so powerful that even the smallest exposure is a seed that can become something great in the future. And perhaps we underestimate what God can do with a little. But that's all through the Bible. It, it is. And, and your professor, um, my friend, your friend, Dr. Roy Fish, he said he averages that it takes people about seven different times to hear mm-hmm. or be exposed to the gospel before they get saved. And if you're not willing to be that first exposure, they'll never be number seven. And so uh, I think we definitely need to do all we can to put our. In fact, last night, uh, Dr. Harbour, we took 41 people out to do door to door evangelism, as I said. Uh, I'm the chair of fire at Southwestern Seminary. I got a PhD in evangelism. And guess how many people got saved that I shared the gospel with last night? None. But I'm not a failure. However, on another team of lay people, they don't have a PhD in evangelism. They don't teach evangelism for a living. They don't hold the oldest chair in evangelism. They saw somebody come to faith in Christ last night. And you know why? Because it's not about the messenger. Right. It's about the gospel. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's why if somebody's listening, you're like, you don't have to go to Wake Forest and get a PhD mm-hmm. to to do this. In mm-hmm. fact, God may even use you even more powerfully than you can ever know because, you know, if if you're a construction worker, 
you know, who better to tell another construction worker uh, this message of the gospel, someone that you have an affinity with, Mm -hmm. someone that's like you, you know, people are going to be likely to listen to you and to uh, hear what, what you have to say, because we all have circles of influence, right? We We do. And there's people, uh, there's people that you that are watching right now, you'll have access to that Dr. Harbour or I, we will never have access to. We'll never get to them. They'll never talk to us. We'll never even see them, but you will. And so take that exposure that you've got, take that knowledge of what you do know about the gospel and tell it to other people. And you know what? If they don't come to faith in Christ at that time, at least you've been faithful to steward the gospel and God will bring, God is powerful enough and he, 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 he's got the ability to bring someone else who can pick up right where you left off. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's God is just so powerful. Let's not underestimate him now. So let's say that God is, uh, how do we know when we're supposed to witness? What are, what are some of these indications that, that God might want me to share? What could you tell us? Yeah. So, you know, a lot of times, um, people think, you know, okay, I'll share the gospel. In fact, if I was asking you right now, who's watching, if you were, would you be willing to share the gospel if God gave you an opportunity to do it? Right now, you're probably right there raising your hand. In fact, I'm in churches all over, I, I, and I ask that question. Everybody raises their hand. And then I ask this question, what is an opportunity to share the gospel? You see, we'll say, we say that if God gives it to us, we'll take it. But what many of us think whenever we think of, oh, if God's going to give me an opportunity to share the gospel, we think that means, oh, well, a light's going to shine down from heaven like it did on Paul at Damascus. And we're going to uh, uh, hear angels singing in the background. Someone's going to come up. They're going to be shocked, spiritually shocked. And they're going to say, what must I do to be saved? And if, you know, if we get that experience, yes, I'll share the gospel. But that's not an opportunity. I mean, that, that it could happen, but it likely won't happen. It never happened to me. I, I don't know. So what are some just some easy ways for you to do that? Well, what if you just said to God, God, an opportunity for me to share the gospel is when you bring someone into the path of my life and my network who maybe has cross uh, cross shirt, cross um, 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 clothing, or a cross jewelry, you know, that they're wearing, or a necklace, something like that. When that happens, and that's God saying, okay, that's an opportunity for you, here's a simple question you can ask. What does the cross mean to you? That's good. Yeah. Because you're going to be doing two things. First of all, you're going to see what they think. Mm-hmm. But second of all, as you see what they think, that's going to help you know how you can get, you know, if they say, well, it's just, I just liked it. It's just beautiful to me. Then you can talk about, there's actually a meaning behind what you even see in the shape. So it's going to help you as you move forward. You know, what if you come up and, you know, a lot of people like to get ink today. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I see it all the time. And uh, tattoos. And, and people who get those many times, They've gotten those because that is a part of their story, their life story. Mm-hmm. And just say, hey, what, 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 what part of that uh, tattoo there is a part of your life story? I'd love to. And they love to tell. I've never had anybody who I've yeah. asked. They love to tell because mm-hmm. they're wearing it. And when they tell you something about your life story, they're giving you information for you to help think about how does the gospel relate to them. And then you can say, you know what? I don't have a tattoo, but in my heart of hearts, I've got a story, too. That's and you good. share your gospel, yeah, you know, just small little ways. What, what about, uh, I've got one, one of the, uh, one of the ones I've done with God is I said, okay, God, if I'm riding public transportation, mm-hmm. if I'm riding on the Uber or the Lyft, or I'm riding on a plane or a train uh, with someone, then the person I'm sitting beside, I'm going to share the gospel. With that. I'm going to attempt to share the gospel with that person. Um, I'll never forget uh, one time uh, just in the past year, uh, there was a person who came in and that person uh, was definitely not a Christian. Uh, their lifestyle was such that it was foreign to what the scripture said. And they were sitting uh, at the window. I was sitting in the aisle, so there was a seat beside me. And, and unfortunately, I hate to admit this, but I knew if I shared the gospel with this individual, it was going to be tough. And I just expected them to get, you know, uh, harass me or whatever. And I just remember praying there and saying, God, thank you so much that when I made that uh, deal with you, it's the person beside me, not the person beside <laughs> the person beside me. Guess what? <laughs> Nobody came to sit in between us, so she was beside me. And so I, I shared the gospel with this individual. And do you know what? Though they didn't accept it, they were willing to hear the whole gospel from start to finish, even take a gospel track. And I, I was thinking they were not going to do anything. So, you know, maybe maybe whenever you get on public transportation. Um, there's also another principle. How many of you have ever thought, man, I feel like the Holy Spirit's asking me to share the gospel with that person, mm-hmm. a Holy Spirit impression. Well, you know, many times when that happens to me, Dr. Harper, I always say, 
well, you know, uh, that must be my flesh. That must be the devil. But that's never the devil. He'll never want you to share the gospel. That is the Holy Spirit. And uh, I can't tell you how many times the Lord has blessed me when I've followed through. So think of some just regular, everyday, actual occurring circumstances that might be opportunities and say to God, God, when this happens, I'm going to uh, go, do, go forward in your power and I'm going to attempt to share the gospel. So, and when you when you do these, 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 these indications, I like how you, you, you know, you ask a question mm -hmm. that's very disarming. Isn't yes, it? it is. It is. You know, and uh, for example, here's another way to use questions. Um, if you come into contact uh, here in Texas, I see a lot of Mormons there, you know, going door to door mm -hmm. and other things like that. Um, one way, or we have a lot of Catholics We're we've yeah. got a lot of Hispanics. So when you when you interface with somebody who's a, maybe of another faith tradition, you may already know what they believe. In many mm -hmm. many cases, I do. If it's a Mormon, I know what they believe. It's a Catholic, I know what they believe. But by asking a reverse question and saying something like, "Hey, I've heard about Mormonism. It, it, what what is it that Mormons or what is it that you could tell me that could make me right with God and go to heaven?" Or a Catholic. Now I already know what they're going to tell me. Right. But when you say that, you say, well, you know, that's different than what the Bible says. Again, not what I think. If you say it's different than what I believe, that's just a battle between me and you. But if you say that's different than what the Bible says, then you're able to go to the Bible and show them how to do things. So, yeah, questions are, are a really good way to do that. Um, may, maybe with a holiday. You know, we just had Memorial Day this past week, a week mm -hmm. ago today. And um, maybe at Memorial Day when you're you know, at the pool or with something, hey, isn't it good to have a good, good day off? Uh, but although it's a good day, it's really a good day because we have people who died for our freedom mm -hmm. and that's a great cost. And then as we kind of talk about that, maybe they've got a family member that died in war or something or in the service and then say, you know what, as great as that sacrifice was, there's even a greater sacrifice that brought freedom. And then just go to the gospel. You know, sometimes it's just the small things. Small. So things. I, I remember one time that, uh, you know, we had a guy and he was he was picking his child up at our church. Mm -hmm. And so I went over to talk to him and I started and he immediately went. Don't don't talk to me about anything. I'm a Catholic. <laughs> and so and I said, oh, that's that's awesome. I said, but are you the best kind? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he goes, what's the best kind? I said. Well, the kind that has Jesus in their heart. And he started to argue with me. And then you start thinking about it. Like, I don't think I better argue against that. Yeah. And uh, so it's about two weeks later. I saw him. He, he showed up at church. He's in the back row. And then, uh, you know, a few Sundays later, I saw him toward the middle. And then it, it was a few months later. He's up there near the front. And then not long after that, I baptized him. Crazy. Right before I baptized him, he, he, he smiled at me and he said, I'm the best kind now, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, I mean, he's, he's, this guy's a great guy. He owns wow. a big athletic company, Praise you know, here Lord. in Dallas, you know, they manufacture things and, you know, but it's just that one little thing, you know, had him made him, made him think, you know, because at the end of the day, this thing's about Jesus. It's it all is. about Jesus. It is. it is. And here's the fact of the matter. If you're doing evangelism in your own power, you're going to get your own results. Mm -hmm. I've done it many times. Yeah. I mean, I fall flat, flat on my face. But here's the fact of the matter that most people don't think about in evangelism. You are not alone. When Jesus gave his commission that Dr. Harper referenced at the beginning of this show, he said, and I am with you, not some of the time, not whenever I've got time, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. And I just want to say to you, dear listener, dear watcher, I want you to know that if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, it is always God's will. There is never a bad time to tell somebody the gospel. And I also want you to know that if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, there's never a time that he's not with you. He doesn't come and go. He is a permanent resident in your heart. And the fact of the matter is, is instead of going out thinking you're all alone in evangelism, realize he is with you. You know, in Acts chapter 18, Paul, Paul, the greatest missionary evangelist in the world, even better than Roy Fish, Paul, mm -hmm. he was afraid. Yeah. And he was so afraid he was going to stop sharing the gospel because of all that he had went through and encountered that the Lord Jesus had to come to him in the vision at night. Acts 18 tells this. And, and the Lord said to him, he said, Paul, do not be afraid, but go on speaking. That's how we know he's afraid to share the gospel. Mm -hmm. Go on speaking. Don't be silent. And here's the reason why. For I am with you. And so, you know, whoever you are who's watching this right now, and you know you ought to feel 
you, you ought to feel more active and more intentional in evangelism. Don't beat yourself up. Understand that God has said in his word, there is there, no, therefore no condemnation for those who in Christ Jesus. Don't think about the failures of the past. Don't think about the witnessing encounters you did not take. There's many for you in the future. And right now, I just want to encourage you just to pray to God and say, God, I want to do my best to attempt to have gospel conversations, to present the gospel and call for people to come to faith in Christ. And you know what? If you've never had God answer a prayer for you, if you pray that kind of prayer, oh. that's the kind of prayer he'll answer. God put somebody in my path to witness to, that's going to be an answered prayer. That's exactly right. Okay, so now there's no wrong way, no real wrong way right. to witness if you're tr trying and you're doing it in, in sincerity. Right. So, and I believe the Holy Spirit will, will help you give you words. So, but let's talk about this uh, because you've been there so many times at this crossroad, the transition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... You know, what I've what I've tried to do and what I've made a practice of is um, a lot of times if you start asking a lot of real ambiguous, vague questions to people, they start thinking, at least they would do with me. They think I'm a member of the FBI or the CIA <laughs> because they're saying, why are you asking so many questions about me? Yeah. So, again, it's never bad to ask a question. It's never bad to attempt to share the gospel. But what I've realized is I just need to kind of jump out there. So I've kind of adopted a catchphrase that helps me transition. Now that you, you pick up yours. But what I've done is I will go to somebody and I'll say something like this. Hey, have you heard any good news today? Now, with you, you think about the news today with all that's going on yeah. internationally, nationally right now, there's no good news. And if, if there was, the news would make it bad news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have. So when I ask that question, have you heard any good news today? I would say probably 98% of people who tell me, uh, who respond to me say, no, I haven't. And you know what I say then? I've got some good news for you. Hmm. And I have every single time I've done that, I've been able to go right through the gospel. I don't take 30 minutes, but being able to go right through the gospel and say, hey, is that a decision you'd like to make today? Another one that I like to do is to say, hey, has anybody taken the time to tell you about God's great love for you? 98% hmm. of the time, people have said no. Even when they say yes, it's been their mom. And I'll say, well, you know what? I want to be the second person today to tell you that Jesus <laughs> loves you. And then I just go in. And, you know, I have never, it's not magic. It's not me. It's not my knowledge. It's the spirit of God. I've never had anybody say, stop. I don't want to hear that. Hmm. So, and even if they do, God's going to bless you for your stewardship of the gospel. So th those are some real easy ways for you to get in the gospel without people thinking that you're trying to do a background check on them or something like that. Now, one of the things that you're doing in there with these, that's, that's subtle as genius is you're getting their permission uh -huh. to, to share with them. Yeah. And you know, that's the thing Dr. Roy Fish always told me. He said, you know, if somebody asks you, please witness to me, that's pretty easy, right? <laughs> yeah. But, but they're I not going to do that. Lost no, people are not going to do that. But <laughs> in, when you're doing this, really, you're getting permission. Yes. And they say, that's, they're, it's almost like you, you should hear that. You should hear these words. Please witness to me. That's exactly right. I, I've never held a, a Bible at somebody's throat or anything yeah. like that. But just asking those questions, those questions that kind of lead to or making those statements that kind of lead to the to the uh, presentation of the gospel, God blesses it. And again, are there times that it doesn't happen? Yes, but I will tell you, I'm able to share all of the gospel a lot more than I'm not able to share the gospel. And uh, every time I share the gospel, does somebody come to faith in Christ? No, but no one will ever come to faith in Christ if we don't ever share the gospel. So one time, you know, when I was a professor at the seminary, uh, we decided to just adjourn class because because somebody said well you know if you're so good and you know everything we want to see you share the gospel i said well let's go <laughs> you know let's 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 go to the mall so we yep. went down to the mall uh -huh. you know down there in the seminary uh -huh. so we we go to the food court and so i just i just said watch this everybody sit here just stay here mm -hmm. so anyway a guy's walking by I said hey excuse me i said i want you to know something i'm a seminary professor I'm teaching them to share the gospel. Would you mind coming and standing right here so I can share the gospel with you so they might can learn how I do it? He was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, boom, I'm just, I'm just, just, you know, just, just giving it right there and, uh -huh. you know, and ask him if he wanted to receive Jesus in his heart. I wish I, the end of the story was that he did, but he did. Right, right. You know, uh, and then when it was over, one of the students said, well, that's no fair. I mean, you 
you, you, I mean, you kind of what, you know, you know, you, you told him we we're here and that, that looked really easy. And I was like, well, I just told him the truth. That's right. You know, I just asked him, I mean, he was just willing to jump in there. And I said, you know, he'll always remember this. And how did, I said, but the main thing you got to know is I got permission. That's right. I, uh -huh. I, I had a cracked door. Yep. And I and I went through it. That's right. So it could be other things. It, it, it could be anything. And people in your church, I'll tell you this too, and, and I want to just encourage you. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, make sure that you're taking your children or your grandchildren evangelizing with you. Mm -hmm. It'll make all the difference in the world. We've got a, a member of our church, um, a, a new Christian. She's a little girl. Uh, she got saved. She started doing Bible studies in her public school. And uh, her kid, whenever she had to stop uh, because of uh, just school and stuff, her friends are saying, when are you going to come back and teach us the Bible? She went out door to door evangelizing, which that's not the only way to do it. But that's just one way. She went out door to door evangelizing with our church. And every place they went, no one came to the door. And that little girl was crying because she didn't get to tell somebody. Mm -hmm. So uh, I and her grandfather, we said, we're going to go find somebody before the end of the night. And the first house we went to, she was able to share the whole gospel with that person. So let me tell you something. The reason I do evangelism today, again, is because of the spirit. But my dad, as an eight-year-old boy, one year saved, my dad took me out evangelizing. And I've never gotten over it. Wow. So I just want to encourage you. If, if You may not be a seminary professor, but you're a dad, you're a mom, you're a grandma, and I just want to encourage you, tell, take your family with you, because if they see you doing it, they'll want to do it. We've been talking today about gospel opportunities with Dr. Matt Queen. And as we wrap up here, uh, Dr. Queen, uh, any resources, anything that uh, you would point our readers to that would help us be more effective witnesses? Absolutely. Uh, if you want to go to seminaryhillpress.com, uh, you'll you'll go there and you can click on books. Uh, there's a book that I've written, a small little book called Everyday Evangelism. I've got that. That's uh, that, a good one. Thank you. Yeah. There's another one for your church. If you're a pastor to help assess your church, it's called Mobilize to Evangelize. There's also another booklet. Uh, it's a devotional booklet called And You Shall Be My Witnesses. Several of our faculty members have contributed 31 devotions to evangelism in that book. I've also written a little gospel track called Satisfied. You can get all of that there. Of course, there's some great uh, uh, other resources out there. Bill Face, Share Jesus Without Fear is a, another good one that a lot of people like. So here's the good news. Uh, you, The best evangelism program or evangelism resource out there is the one you'll use. Mm -hmm. And the worst is the one that you don't. So just find something you like, get that, and let God bless you to see someone come to faith in Christ. And then before I tell everybody, uh, you tell everybody where to find you. You mentioned a track. You, you wrote yeah. a track. So I, uh -huh. I, I can't. I had to talk about that for a second. So, you know, uh, are tracks effective? I think they are. You know, I learned in Dr. Danny Forshee's class at Southeastern Seminary. He, he, he always told us to carry a track with it. He actually, you will not find Danny Forshee around without, I don't have a pocket on. Usually I try to put one in without a track on him mm -hmm. to be able to share the gospel somebody. Because sometimes you, they, won't, they don't have time, they don't want to listen, but they may take a track. And who knows if they'll read it, but at least they've got something in their hand. So, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's effective to, to have a track. Again, I just don't, I don't just pass out tracks enough for my evangelism, yeah. but I have them for further conversation, further consultation. Yeah, I think a track can witness where we can't. It can go yes. places we can't it go. Can. It can go under doors. It, it can, can, you know, travel in all kinds of places. Yes. So it's just a, a great thing. Well, Dr. Queen, um, you speak at churches. Uh, tell us how somebody can get you in to speak at, at their church or how we can find you, uh, websites, anything like that. Okay, yes. Yeah, so I am on Facebook and Twitter and on Instagram at D-R-M-A-T-T-Q-U-E-E-N, Dr. Matt Queen, all together, no spaces, no periods, uh, on any of those formats. Also, you can get me on email, which is mqueen at swbts.edu. And if I can help you or your church, please don't hesitate to contact me. Well, we've been listening to Dr. Matt Queen, and he is just excellent. We're going to have him back on uh, next year when both of his books come out. And uh, I hope that you will share this episode with somebody else that needs to hear it because you may, in sharing it with someone that's even a Christian, they might share it with someone that's not a Christian and you might have a part in their salvation. So be sure and share this. These episodes, we're on, we're ubiquitous. We're on everything. We're on Spotify and Pandora and iTunes and uh, Apple podcast and YouTube and so forth and so on. So please uh, share this episode. Also to be sure and check out our website, which is defendingthefaith.law. 
and you can find uh, some of our resources. You can keep up with our cases. You can sign up for our, our newsletter, which comes out about once a week. We have different episodes. We also are offering a free book uh, right now this month. It's called Objection Overruled and How to Respond to the Top 10 Objections to Christianity. Just another thing that you might encounter when you're witnessing and, and how to respond to those. Very, very simply written. Uh, get a copy of that. Well, God bless you. And we thank you for tuning in and we'll see you in the next episode of Defending the Faith.